We'll consider in this section whether you can actually measure a single ion activity coefficient. What we talked about so far is measuring mean activity coefficients and mean activities and mean concentrations, a geometric average. But can we actually measure a single ion activity coefficient? And if we could measure it, would it mean anything? I use the word maybe. Now, when I made, uh, gave this lecture last year, I said, yeah, this is how you do it, and so on. Uh, but then I got to reading the literature, and maybe not. Let me give you some background. So here's an, um, an article by Guggenheim from 1929. He was a, quite a good thermodynamicist. And here he's, he's saying that you cannot measure individual activ activity coefficients for individual ions. Yeah, so here it is. The general, I'm going to make that a little bigger in case you're looking at this on your iPhone. And here's the, the bottom line, which is almost the bottom line of this page. The general principle why measuring activity coefficients of single ions, or even talking about activity of single ions, is incorrect is as follows. The electric potential difference between any two points in different media can never be measured and has yet to be defined in terms of physical realities. It is therefore a conception which has no physical significance. Okay, well, that's, and everybody uh, sort of, if you look at introductory uh, physical chemistry texts, they say, no, you can't measure individual uh, activity coefficients of individual ions, blah, blah, blah. But in fact, maybe you can. Let's actually define um, what we mean by the activity coefficient of a single ion. For example, if you have, in the previous example, we had H plus and Cl minus. Well, just let's define the electrochemical potential of H plus to be the standard state electrical chemical potential of H plus plus RT times the natural log, the activity of H plus. And that would then be the electrochemical potential of H plus standard state plus RT times the natural log of the activity of the single ion H plus times the concentration of the ion. Uh, what do we want to use standard state? How about molal? Molal concentration of H plus. So there is a definition of the activity coefficient of a single ionic species. Let's see. So here we go. Here's a journal of physical chemistry. That that article that uh, journal's not too shabby. That's an ACS art, uh, ACS journal, American Chemical Society journal. And here talking about single activity ion activity experiment versus theory. All right. So here it is. Maybe make it a little bigger so you can see it. So this is published last year, 2012. And even though from a straightforward thermodynamic standpoint. Only the mean ionic activity has a clear, undisputable physical meaning. There's been a literature yearning for almost a century to measure single ion activities and, and so on. So he says, yeah, maybe you can't, but nonetheless, it's useful. So let's actually uh, measure single ion activity coefficients. And what people normally do who do this are use uh, what's known as ion-specific electrodes. The most common example of that would be a pH meter. So a pH meter uh, has an electrode. You put it in, in uh, the solution, and it measures hydrogen ion concentration, measures the pH, or hydrogen ion activity. No, yeah, that's right, because when you measure electro electrical stuff, electrochemical stuff, you measure activity. So we've been using, essentially, using the concept of pH and pH meters and pH electrodes. We've been using for many, many years the concept of a single ion activity and single ion activity coefficient. But according to Guggenheim, 1929, that has no physical uh, significance. So Guggenheim's argument is the following. Uh, in order to talk physically meaningful, what you would have to have is a beaker full of H plus ions. The problem is you can't go down to the stock room and buy, uh, say, a, a bunch of H plus ions. You always have a counter ion, Cl minus. So what you have to maintain in this macroscopic solution is electroneutrality. So electroneutrality. So you always have to have the negative. So you can't really talk about just one without having to talk about the other. That's his first point. The second point, remember we defined electrochemical activity, electrochemical, sorry, chemical, electrochemical potential. That was defined as the chemical potential of some species 
plus ZF times the electric field. So the electrochemical potential which you measure is composed of two different parts. You only have one measurement so you can arbitrarily divide up the electrochemical potential into some electric uh, chemical potential due to concentration and some uh, electric uh, stuff that has to do with the charge. But you have like sodium ions. The sodium and the ion, these are two that are linked together. You can't pull off the plus and just have the sodium. They are one and the same. And so Guggenheim is arguing that you can't really separate out the chemical and the electrical part of the electrochemical potential. It's arbitrary. You can easily, by convention, assign different amounts to there. And therefore, it's, you can't talk about uh, individual contributions to electrochemical potential. But nonetheless, this article was uh, published in the ACS Journal, pretty good journal, and talk about single ion activity. Well, uh, as uh, scientists are often don't play all the way uh, nice all the time, so here is a, the comment on single ion activity. So here's this guy who's saying that, well, what you just <laughs> saying to the guy who published the article, the previous article, we'll talk about Debye potential and Debye Huckle theory uh, in the next part of this lecture. What he's saying is that it appears that the theoretical activity coefficients for single ions are mathematical constructs that are har constructs that are hardly meaningful from the physical point of view. <laughs> okay, well, so you can talk about them, you can calculate them, but they don't mean anything. And then when a journal receives a comment on an article, meaning you're criticizing the article, they invite the author of the original article to reply. So here's Frankel's reply uh, to the comment on his original article. And <laughs> it's kind of interesting reading here. Uh, so Rubin accuses me of dismissing the phonological interpretation, blah, 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 blah. So uh, I guess this guy, Frankel's a little pissed off that <laughs> Frankel did that. And then what he does is he goes on and starts waxing philosophically. As Rubin says that, well, you know, it has no physical meaning, the model's useless, and so on. So what this guy does is a uh, philosophy here, which building a theoretical model, which guy says it doesn't mean anything. So this is what it means. It involves conceiving a model that contains only the essential features of the real solution. If the model yields the wrong answers, then one tries again by changing the imagined model until it runs a model, arrives at a model, the theoretical positions on which agree well with experimental observation, so on. So he's defending based on philosophical grounds the fact that even though it's a useful model, even though you may not have any physical reality, as most models are only approximations of physical reality. And he goes on to say, if this guy's uh, validity requirement were prerequisite in theoretical modeling, no theory could have ever been devised. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, recent. That was last year, going back and forth. So to answer the question, that's why I said, can single ion activities be measured? I say maybe. Depends on what side of the philosophical argument you're talking about. Well, let's actually go ahead and say we can measure activity coefficients of single ions. And I'll show you how you can do that. And actually, I did this uh, when I was doing some. Uh, I submitted a paper, and the paper, and I was measuring uh, something as a function of chloride concentration. And the reviewer of the paper sent it back saying, "Well, you know, you really should be plotting this not as a function of chloride concentration, but chloride activity." So I said, "Oh, I guess I have to measure activity." So I went ahead and measured activity by this way. I'll show you what I did for that. And uh, my calculations, by the way, this should be same as last time, uh, 50.9 millivolts. Here is the system I did to actually measure the activity coefficient. I had two beakers, and it was separated by a salt bridge. Here's my salt bridge. And over here, we had a sodium chloride solution. And over here, we had a sodium chloride solution. And here I had a silver, silver chloride electrode. Here it is, and so I coded this. Actually, I got it from a pH meter. They use oftentimes, or pH electrode, oftentimes use silver, silver chloride as reference electrodes. And here's another silver, silver chloride electrode here. Over here, I put a one, um, sorry, one molar concentration. And here, let's say I want to measure the activity coefficient of, say, a 0.15 molar solution. So this is known as a concentration cell. 
Let's write down uh, the Nernst equation for this. It's non-equilibrium, one molar, 0.15 molar. You have a concentration gradient of chloride across there. So voltage will be the standard cell voltage plus, sorry, that should be a minus. I'm going to forget that minus there. Minus RT over NF times the activity, uh, sorry, times the natural log of the activity. Well, actually, let's write down what's going on here on the, say, side one, and this is side two, on side one we'll have the reaction silver chloride, like this reduction reaction solid, goes to a silver solid plus chloride aqueous, this water solutions, and we're, this takes one electron. You take the one electron, the silver plus makes silver solid. And on the other side, it's the same reaction. One electron, we'll write as reduction, goes to silver uh, plus Cl minus aqueous. So on side two, this concentration is one molar. On side one, this concentration is 0 0.15 molar. So we have a concentration gradient. So this is a concentration cell. And note that you have the same half reaction, so E0 is 0. And N, we have one electron, so RT over F at uh, room temperature, we said was 0 0.02568 in SI units. It's RT over F, where N is equal to 1. Um, oh, I forgot to write down what this is. So this is be the not logarithm. Uh, let's do 1 over 2, so the logarithm of the activity of chloride inside 1 divided by the activity of chloride on side 2. That's not a square, those are sides. So RT over F times the natural log. Now let's make the activity, the activity coefficient. So this would be gamma of the chloride, single ion activity coefficient, times the concentration of chloride. And this has to be in molar because we're using a standard state, although standard states cancel out. Divided by Look, this is at one molar. That's the standard state. So that's just one. So we measure the cell voltage. That is just equal to minus 0 0.02568 times the natural log of the activity coefficient of the single ion minus times the chloride concentration, Cl minus. So you actually do this. A chloride concentration given in the problem is 0 0.15 molar. So you calculate this out, you find that the activity coefficient of chloride is 0 0.92. So there's an experimental setup in which you can measure the activity coefficient of a single ion by making one side of the cell be standard state so that activity goes away. But again, you have to keep in mind <laughs> that is still a debatable question of whether the activity coefficients of single ions you do calculate actually mean anything. Oh, by the way, <laughs> this is an interesting little historical note. When I actually went to look up some information about electrochemical potentials and activity coefficients and so on, I went to the National Institutes of Standards. That's a government-run site and said that, um, you know, that all the stuff there. Well, as you may or may not know, the government has shut down. And this is the what you get if you try to go to the government page. NIST, National Institute of Standards Technology, is closed. Affiliated websites not available due to a lapse in government funding. The National Institute. <laughs> so there you go. That's uh, one of the uh, scientific fallouts from the lack of government funding, which happened uh, last uh, Tuesday, I guess. All right, well, just a historical note there.